Got another question for the acids, bases and pH playlist. So we're on to number 15 now. This one deals with the reactions of acids, the pH of a strong alkali, and it has a reactant amount calculation in as well. I hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you think about subscribing to the channel and as always, the links to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. I don't know what you thought about this, but I thought parts of this question were pretty tricky actually. The calculations and that equation at the end, so hopefully you'll score some decent marks on this. Anyway, so the first part of the question, we've got to give two observations uh, from the student's experiment that would show that calcium is more reactive than magnesium. So the first thing we could say is the bubbles of hydrogen would be more vigorous with the calcium, so obviously it's more reactive. And the other thing we could say is that calcium is going to dissolve or disappear sooner. So to help with the next part, I thought the overall equation would be useful. So there it is there, magnesium reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen. So if we look at what's happening to the magnesium, it's gone from the atom to the two plus ion. So it's been oxidized. So we would write that as Mg going to Mg two plus, and there's those two electrons that it's lost. That's why it's oxidation. The reduction half equation is because the hydrogen has gone from the one plus ion to the um, atom in the molecule that makes up the molecule. So what's happened there is we've taken two H plus ions, they've each gained an electron, so two electrons gained, and that goes to the H2 molecule. So moving on to part B now, there's obviously quite a lot of marks there going for this. So the equation that's taking place when they've um, dissolved the sample of barium oxide in distilled water is this one here. You notice I've highlighted the fact that it's a 25 degrees C, that's key to this. So basically the calculation we're going to do is going to tell us some information about the hydroxide ions in the solution that's formed and then we're going to use the ratio between the hydroxide ions and the barium oxide to answer the question, the mass of barium oxide that was used. So the first thing I'm going to do is use that pH information to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration in this solution. So H plus concentration is 10 to the minus pH, so it's 10 to the minus 13.12 which comes out that that many moles per decimeter cubed. Next thing we're going to do is use the KW expression. If you remember, KW equals the H plus concentration multiplied by the OH minus concentration. So if we rearrange this and put um, H plus concentration under the KW, we can find out the OH minus concentration. This is where the temperature is important. The fact that it's at 25 degrees C means that KW equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So now we've got the OH minus concentration. We can work out how many moles must be in there because we know the volume that this solution has. So moles is concentration times volume. And just remember the volume has to be in decimeters cubed, so it's not 0.25 decimeters cubed. So there's that many moles of hydroxide ions and now if we go to the equation, so we know the moles of hydroxide ions, you can see there's a two to one ratio between the hydroxide ions and the barium oxide. So the moles of barium oxide is the moles of hydroxide ions divided by two, so we get that there, and then all we need to do now is multiply by the MR of barium oxide to get the mass, 2.53 grams. So very well done if you got that right, I think that's a bit tricky actually. Moving on to the next part, so we're told 10 cm cubed of dilute sulfuric acid is added to 10 cm cubed of the barium hydroxide solution. Iron equation for the reaction that takes place. Well, you'll notice I've written some ions up here. Dilute sulfuric acid contains H plus ions and sulfate ions. Barium hydroxide contains the two plus barium two plus ion and hydroxide ions. So what's gonna happen? Well, if you remember from your um, qualitative analysis stuff, Barium ions and sulfate ions combine to form a precipitate, white precipitate of barium sulfate. So the ion equation would look like that. Moving on to part C, so you'll notice I've got this little diagram here, I'll just quickly explain that. So limestone, we're told, contains 95% calcium carbonate 
and that's used to make fertilizer Z, which has this awful formula here. All I'm bothered about is the fact that it's CA5. So you can see that to make a mole of fertilizer Z, you're gonna need five moles of calcium carbonate Okay, so with that in mind, let's do this calculation then. So the first thing I'm gonna do is work out how many moles of fertilizer Z we need to make, it's 1.5 kilos. Obviously, we've got to put that in grams. It's just mass over MR. They gave us the MR, thankfully. So that's 1.388 moles of Z to be made. So how many moles of calcium carbonate we're gonna need? We're gonna need five times as many. Comes out at 6.94 moles of calcium carbonate. So let's turn that into grams now, what mass of calcium carbonate is going to be needed. So that's coming out at 694.8 grams, but remember this is not pure calcium carbonate, it's 95% calcium carbonate. So we're going to need a little bit more, so we're going to, need to scale this up to factor in that this is only 95%. So we scale it up by dividing by the percentage, so you could either divide by 95 and multiply by 100 or do what I've done there, divide by 0.95, which to three significant figures comes out at 731 grams. So again, very well done if you did that one, because I think that's a little bit tricky as well. And finally, this equation for the reaction uh, between this thing here and HCl, dilute hydrochloric acid. So we've got magnesium ions in there, so we're going to make magnesium chloride with the hydrochloric acid. We've got calcium ions, so we're going to make calcium chloride. And we've also got a carbonate, so this gas is going to be carbon dioxide. And obviously what is the other product? Okay, so there's the unbalanced equation with the state symbols in. So the first thing I'm going to do is balance the magnesium. So you can see there's Mg3 there, so I need 3 in front of that Mg. The calcium's fine because there's only 1 in the um, mineral. Um, what else do I need? I need a 4 for the CO2 because I've got CO3 4 times. So 4 there. So if we balance the H2Os now, we've got four oxygens unaccounted for. So if we put a four in front of the H2O, last thing we need to do is sort out the chlorines or the hydrogens. They're all in the same thing, the HCl. So four H2s means there's eight Hs needed from the left. So an eight in front of the HCl. So like I said at the start of the video, I think that's a tricky question. So very well done if you scored a decent amount of marks on that.